Number four Oklahoma travels to Dallas to square off against rival Texas. Seventh ranked Nebraska tries to stay unbeaten as they take on Missouri. The Golden Buffaloes return home to test their number 14 ranking against Iowa State. The Jayhawks travel south to face the third ranked Miami Hurricanes. And the upstart Wildcats of Kansas State play host to Oklahoma State. The Big 8 Gridiron Report is next. Gridiron Report. And now your hosts, Drew Goodman and Dave Logan. And hello again, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Big 8 Gridiron Report. I'm Drew Goodman. And I'm Dave Logan. An interesting week this week in the Big 8 Conference. Maybe not quite as exciting as last week, which is probably good news. Yeah, everybody played with four downs this week, right? Yeah, no fifth down controversies, which we're uh, happy to report. Uh, a good week, I think. A good week of football. Nebraska, the only unbeaten team in the Big 8 Conference. A great game between Oklahoma and Texas, which we will take a closer look. And... Maybe the surprise team in the country, certainly in the conference, the Kansas State Wildcats get yet another victory. Yeah, I don't think too many people would argue with you about that. Let's pick up the conference uh, standings right now and the overall standings. Nebraska, as Dave mentioned, undefeated, 2-0 in conference play. Oklahoma's unbeaten in conference play. They're 5-1. The uh, Buffaloes are 5-1-1. They have yet to lose in Big 8 play. And then Kansas State, 1-1 in the conference and 4-2. And I almost made them 5-1-1, but they're 4-2. They wouldn't have minded. Iowa State, 2-3-1 followed by Kansas. They are 1-4-1 in a tough game this past weekend against Miami. And Oklahoma State and Missouri both have two. Since the end of the war, what are the Cowboys' record in bowl games? David? Mm -hmm. Oklahoma State's really had one of the better bowl records of any Big A conference team, and unless you're a Cowboy fan, you probably can't believe that, but that is true. Uh, I would like a helpful hint and tell me how many games they've played. They've been in 12, and I'll also tell you, you're, right, you're on the right track, because uh, didn't last week we discovered that uh, OSU is uh, the only team in the Big A to win a bowl game the last few years? Yeah, they've been very good. I'll say eight and four. Nine and three, very close. Not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. For you. In any event, OSU was uh, in Manhattan, Kansas this past Saturday, taking on the Kansas State Wildcats, and the Wildcats came into that ball game three up and two down. Now, despite that winning record, something uh, the Wildcats haven't had in quite a while, they have not or had not won in conference play since 1986. They wanted to get things right this past Saturday. Let's return to Manhattan, the Oklahoma State Cowboys and the Kansas State Wildcats. In Manhattan, Kansas, the surprising Wildcats of Kansas State face the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. And on their first drive of the afternoon, it was the Hawks continuing to impress. Jackson, first down and more. Up to the 45, they'll down him at the 47 yard line. Pat Jackson starts things off with the run around the left side, gathering up 15 yards near midfield. And now Straw to throw for the first time. Then the Kansas State field general, Carl Straw, went to the passing attack, and he found Russ Campbell for 29 yards, and the Cats are knocking at the Cowboys' door. The drive was complete when Kit Rawlings goes in from one yard out, and the Wildcats led 7 to nothing. The Cowboys' offense went to work mostly on the arm of quarterback Earl Wheeler. Wheeler back to throw. Going long distance. Picked up by Robert Kirksey. 
Here he goes to Robert Kirksey for the 36-yard gainer all the way to the Kansas State 16. But the K-State defense stiffened and forced to carry Blanchard 30-yard field goal, making it 7-3 in the first quarter. The Cats added the field goal, and then the Cowboy offense did it again. Gerald Hudson did most of the work as he gets outside for 12 yards to the 43. Hudson seemed to get the job done all afternoon. He rushed for 150 yards and had Wildcat defenders chasing him all game. As you might expect, Wheeler to throw outside to Kirksey. Good for 11 yards and a first down for Oklahoma State. Wheeler then went to the air and he found Kirksey for another 11 yards to the K-State 33. Backup quarterback Kenny Ford then entered the game and he responded with a three-yard strike. And the game was all tied at 10 going into the half. After the Wildcats went three and out on their opening drive of the second half, the Cowboys and Hudson went right back to work. This 20-yard pickup gave Oklahoma State first and goal at the Wildcat one-yard line. But Kansas State's defense wouldn't fold that easily. Twice Hudson tried the route over the top and twice he was stuffed for no game. Into the end zone goes Cecil Wilson, touchdown, and Oklahoma State has their first lead of the game. Finally, on third down, Cecil Wilson got the call and he did the job and the Cowboys now have the lead at 17-10. But the Cavs still had some punch left in the bowl. Straw across the middle, wide open. First catch for Michael Smith. Carl Straw and his arm rifled the Cats back into the game. Michael Smith is the recipient of this pass, and he turns it into a 26-yard gainer, getting Kansas State out of bad field position. First and 10, K-State at the 27. Then it was Straw finding Russ Campbell for another 15 yards. The Cat offense was marching right down the Cowboys' throats. From the power eye, Schiller, touchdown! The job was complete when Rod Schiller plunged in from the one. And the contest was tied once again, this time at 17. play of the game came on the next drive as Jamie Mendez picks off the Kenny Ford pass and makes the nice return, giving the Cat offense the ball inside the OSU 20. The offense knew what to do then. On third down and seven, K-State has been successful on their last three third downs. Straw in the grass, they would have called it in the NFL, instead it goes to Schiller to the two! Draw up top, finds Schiller for 14 yards and a first and goal at the three. Straw, touchdown! Then it's the general calling his own number, and the Wildcats recapture the lead 23-17. to 17. The Cowboys would have one last shot. Ford still in a quarterback on the option. Pitch out. Hudson cuts back. Hudson and his feet. Look out. He could burn it all the way. Hudson continued to chew up the defense. He takes the right side on this one, and he picks up 23 to the 44. Then it was Ford on the keeper, and he found some running room as he gains 15 down to the 10 for first and goal. But on third and goal from the 10, Keeper is stripped by Chris Patterson. And Danny Needham is there for the recovery to preserve Kansas State's first Big A victory in four years as they down Oklahoma State 23 to 17 in Manhattan.
So Kansas State got their fourth victory of the year, and I think the early on favorite for the Big A coach of the year might very well be Bill Snyder. Done a terrific job, and the Wildcats held the ball 13 minutes more than did the Cowboys. And, you know, going into the game, I thought the running game of Oklahoma State might prevail, but not so. Yeah, certainly with Gerald Hudson, one would have figured that. Pat Jones, after the ball game in his inimitable style, said the better team won the football game. That's how far Kansas State has come. Another indication of how far Kansas State has come. That's a good imitation, is. by the way. You like that? Yeah. I do Fisher to Barry uh, of Air Force <laughs> very well. I'll, I'll show you that afterward. I'll tell you that one afterward. You know another indication that they've really come afar? What's that? The fact that they didn't tear the goalpost down after the ball game. They're getting used to winning yeah. in Manhattan. They're expecting to win, and certainly they've done it four times this year, and uh, a really improved football team in the Big 8 Conference. Well, and report, along with Dave Logan, I'm Drew Goodman, and uh, we haven't changed hairdos, as you've noticed. No John so, Riggins do yet. No, no John Riggins Next do. week, maybe. Time for uh, plays of the week, players of the week, all that good stuff. Yes, indeed, and we will start with the offensive player of the week this week in the Big A Conference, and he is Nebraska junior quarterback Mickey Joseph. As the Huskers rolled over the Missouri Tigers 69-21, to Joseph rushed for four touchdowns and passed for another. Against Missouri, he also directed the Cornhuskers to a season-high 622 total yards, including 500 yards on the ground. Joseph had 95 yards rushing on nine carries and 65 yards passing, completing four of eight. The offensive player of the week in the Big A Conference is the junior quarterback for the Cornhuskers, Mickey Joseph. The defensive player of the week this week in the Big A Conference is a great one. Oklahoma junior linebacker Joe Bowden, number 45. He flies to the football. He's everywhere. And once again, he was all over the place Saturday against the University of Texas. He had 14 tackles, eight of them unassisted, and he caused a fumble. Of course, Oklahoma came up on the short end against Texas, but Bowden was spectacular as he normally is. He's averaging about 10 tackles a game. He is one of the finest backers, not only in the conference, but in the entire nation. He is but a junior. Joe Bowden, junior linebacker from Oklahoma, the defensive player of the week in the Big 8. Dave, you've seen uh, Joe Bowden play before. Last year he started playing toward the end of the year quite a bit. This guy yeah. is something else. To, to say he is active, I think, would be an understatement. He goes from sideline to sideline. In the tradition of great Oklahoma linebackers, Joe Bowden. No question about it. We've got three plays of the week this past week. We'll start in the Oklahoma-Texas game. Oklahoma with the ball, and Cale Gundy in the third quarter passes to number 11, Otis Taylor. What a great one-handed catch for a 26-yard game. Again, Otis Taylor, a great one-handed catch. That's offensive play number one. Gotta like those uh, one-handed catches. Huh? Uh, Any time a receiver does anything on the show, you know Dave Logan will be quick to remind us. I am biased. Yes, a former receiver, Dave Logan. And a former running back you are, so go ahead. <laughs> Where was I a former running back? Come on now. In any event, we'll talk about a good running back right now. Eric Bieniemy. He's a terrific running back, and they needed him in a big way, especially in the third quarter. Close football game, Iowa State and Colorado at Boulder, and Biennemi breaks loose for a 50-yard run all the way down to the 16-yard line. That set up a touchdown a couple of plays later, and uh, CU never looked back thanks to Biennemi's run. Once again, over 100 yards, one of the leading rushers in the nation, Eric Biennemi. Yeah, Eric Bieniemy. we've talked about what a great competitor he is. I think we even mentioned it on this particular show. Bill McCartney, the head coach of CU, said, I looked at the films and I realized this guy was playing badly hurt in the second half. I couldn't lift his arm. His arm went about right here. He's about halftime. He's one of those guys you got to throw the fishing rod, hook him, and pull him out of the That's game. Right. Otherwise, he's not coming out. No question about it. Well, we've had a couple of offensive plays of the week, and now we will do justice to the defensive side of the football. And our defensive play of the week took place in the Kansas State Oklahoma State game. It was an interception late in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma State's Kenny Ford's pass is intercepted by Andy Needham. He goes high and grabs the foot ball and that one sealed the win for Kansas State. Well, it's time for the hit of the week, and uh, we have missed this segment the last couple of weeks. We haven't been able to find a hit that uh, we felt was appropriate for this show. Matter of fact, we've had cards and letters that have asked for the hit of the week to uh, take place right here in the studio. But we're such good friends that I, we just... I, I won't hit you, Dave. I won't acquiesce. I wish I could <laughs> say the same thing. But we have found the hit of the week this week, and boy, this is a dandy. <laughs> Yeah, this is a pretty good one. It's kind of a sandwich. Let's go to Lincoln, Nebraska. Missouri was in town taking on the Cornhuskers. And this is what Kent Kiefer had to look at all day long. Travis Hill, number 93, and Joe Sims, number 56. This is one of those plays where uh, they said, we'll meet at the quarterback on two. Ready? Break. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be quarterbacks, or quarterbacks, what, they've been have to face the big red. Yeah, that's a, that's a good-looking defense. And uh, Kiefer, of course, uh, pretty good quarterback in his own right, but got sandwiched on that play. No fun. No fun at all. We'll come back, and when we do, 
Yes, it's time to take a look at uh, who we pick around the Big 8 Conference race. It's been an interesting race so far, and uh, we'll show you what happens when we return. Infamous prediction segment, and uh, as we check on last week, we will see that uh, Drew, that is me. A perfect record for you, Drew. Pretty good, huh? It's first. Very impressive. Very impressive. Dave, four and one. The difference, the Oklahoma-Texas game. Actually, I thought Oklahoma would win that And game. they I probably, really you know, it was very close, that field goal, and I would have lost. So I would have been four and one. You would have been five and oh. So I'm still four games ahead as we get ready for our trip to Miami. And, and I know uh, where I'm going to buy you dinner if I lose. Where might that be? Uh, you see that burger joint this adjacent to the studio? Thanks very here? much, Drew. Yeah. On to bigger and better things. Let's take a look at uh, the, the schedule this week, and we will start with Iowa State at Oklahoma. The Sooners coming off that loss, as Drew mentioned, to Texas. Iowa State and Oklahoma had a great, I mean great, you know, we don't throw superlatives around here. Great football game a year ago. Iowa State put some big numbers up offensively. Who do you like, Drew? I always, you know, I like to warm to that uh, conclusion. You like to warm your way through yeah. things. Also, I like uh, Oklahoma. I like Oklahoma as well. Kansas State at Missouri, a battle of uh, two teams trying to get themselves up that ladder. This is a tough one. Kansas State this could, could go in there and sh uh, shock the Tigers, but I like Missouri at home. I will take Missouri as well. Oklahoma State and Nebraska. I can't believe it. You pick first then. All right, I'm taking Nebraska. <laughs> that was the wrong game to pick first. Indeed. Yeah, the Cowboys, uh, I don't think, can beat uh, the Cornhuskers in Lincoln. Not this time. Colorado at Kansas, visiting the Jayhawks. I will take Colorado, although I think Kansas will put some numbers up on the board against that CU defense. I think, it, once again, Colorado's played good football games this year. It always seems to be close at the end. It will be again, but I think the Buffaloes will beat the Jayhawks. That was easy this week. We agreed, we agreed. on everything. It's and kind of naturally, scary, it? Well, it's really scary because I can't make up any ground. I don't like that. Folks, that will do it. Uh, thanks for being with us. For Drew Goodman, I'm Dave Logan. We'll see you next week in the Big 8 Gridiron Report.